Greetings and welcome back to Road 303. We are in the AP Roberts text. We are on page 642. This is the great Billy Collins and his poem, Schoolsville. Now, Collins, one of our most important poets as we turn now to the study of poetry. Born in 1941, poet laureate from 2001 to 2003. He taught for almost 50 years at the University of New York, uh, and of course, one of our really most precious poets of, uh, of uh, the 21st century. Schoolsville, uh, uh, from 1985. Glancing over my shoulder at the past, I realize the number of students I've taught is enough to populate a small town. I can see it nestled in a paper landscape, chalk dust flying down in winter, nights dark as a blackboard. The population ages but never graduates. On hot afternoons, they sweat the final in the park, and when it's cold, they shiver around stoves reading disorganized essays out loud. A bell rings on the hour, and everybody zigzags in the streets with their books. I forgot all their last names first, and their first names last, in alphabetical order. But the boy who always had his hand up is an alderman and owns the haberdashery. The girl who signed her papers and lipstick leans against the drugstore, smoking, brushing her hair like a machine. Their grades are sewn into their clothes like references to Hawthorne. The A's stroll along with the A's, the D's honk whenever they pass another D. All the creative writing students recline on the courthouse lawn and play the lute. Wherever they go, they form a big circle. Needless to say, I am the mayor. I live in the white colonial at Maple and Maine. I rarely leave the house. The car deflates in the driveway. Vines twirl around the porch swing. Once in a while, a student knocks on the door with a term paper 15 years late or a question about Yates or double spacing. And sometimes one will appear in a window pane to watch me lecturing the wallpaper, quizzing the chandelier, reprimanding the air. Now let's work at level one for a moment with this brilliant poem. I should point out that when we are young students and we are being offered important poetry, we got to remember that these are poems constituted as important by usually adults. So this is important. Let's just put it in our notes right away because we're going we're gonna to see a lot of poems like this where it may be more difficult, can I say this out loud, it may be more difficult for you guys to appreciate a poem like this than somebody like me, for example, right? Because Schoolsville is a poem with a speaker who is, of course, an old teacher, okay? who is trying to qualify what it means. I mean, go back to our work at LearnStrong.net and our comments on Yates, ironically mentioned here, and while Swans at Cooley, we point out in that lecture that it's kind of interesting to be an instructor at the senior year or in college, uh, you know, at the freshman year. And every year, the students remain the same age, but clearly the instructor is getting older. Right. And of course, students have this really strange view of teachers sometimes. Like, we, we don't really know what teachers are or who they are outside of, for example, 303. Uh, and so this is a poem that might resonate more powerfully with an older audience. And we should say this is probably true of a good number of the texts that obviously we study together in AP. But we can still appreciate it. Remember, that's our challenge. We're not looking to like text or dislike text. That's, of course, sophomoric and silly. We're looking to somehow appreciate it. So let's play a few games right now at level uh, two and three. Of course, if we began at level one, we're talking about schools, though. This uh, notice glancing over the shoulder at the past. And, of course, the ways in which a teacher's life is assumed with the students that that teacher has seen, has forgotten, re-sees, and the like. At 2A, obviously, we've got the life of students and teachers is clearly understood as quite 
different, right? Notice as well this notion of the passage of time. The vines growing up, right? The brilliance of referencing, of course, Hawthorne and Yeats, both, of course, we've given major lectures over on LearnStrong.net. Somehow the stories, in other words, qualify us as both students as well as teachers, who we are, the stories we accept, and obviously the stories that we reject. The symbolism of the poem is quite interesting as well as the irony. Let's just pay attention to a couple of the moments where the symbolism in this poem really works. Notice he says about Schoolsville, I can see it nestled at line 456. I can see it nestled in a paper landscape, chalk dust flying down in winter, nights dark as a blackboard, a, a beautiful simile, nights dark as a blackboard. Of course, the poem has already lost some of its power in an image like this because we don't use blackboards as much in school. Of course, now we have what, white boards and even Promethean boards and the like. Notice as well the symbolism that's somehow referencing with Hawthorne and the reference to the grades sewn into the clothes. That idea that, of course, the um, you know heroine of Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter, Hester, has that red A sewn into her clothing of her chest, and of course Dimsdale burns his into his chest. That notion that grading is such an integral part of the moment in time that students have in school, but is so quickly usually forgotten after the fact. That is to say, we are the grades somehow that we either receive or we don't receive. Or, of course, the mention of Yeats, as I've already said, will carry with it all kinds of implications, especially for students of 303, where Yeats is given such high esteem. The irony is obvious. Notice, for example, the speaker of the poem will say, I forgot all their last names first, and their first names last, in alphabetical order. Teachers have tendencies to very, very quickly forget most of the names of the students who they teach especially if they have been teaching, as of course Billy Collins uh, continues to do and has done for a long time, or the old man that lectures in 303, right? So there's some interesting irony about that. Of course, notice the girl who signed her papers in lipstick, leaning against the drugstore, smoking, maybe, for example, didn't make it very far after school. You have a sense, obviously, this is high school that's being somehow referenced here, right? Finally, at uh, 3A, the, the text that we could work with, I'm just going to throw out a few uh, that we've worked with in AP. Think about how we said in our study of Plato's Republic that Plato argues in many ways that education is a remembering, but is as well a process of selection and deselection of important events. Sometimes we've talked about it even as brainwashing to a degree. You are your education. And of course, we can think about the cave allegory in this regards. As well, think about what we've said about Victorian schools in our study of uh, Dickens' Hard Times and, and, Bra and Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. Go back and take a look at those as well as if you need refreshing. And finally, 3B, somehow to relate this information to you personally. Who was the teacher that somehow you connect with in this regards? Who was maybe, you might say, your favorite teacher or the teacher that sticks out in your mind? From We could start in middle school. Um, and, 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 and maybe a, a recognition as well of, you know, your, your own evolution of thinking about teachers. How has your view of thinking about teachers changed in the same way as seniors and freshmen in college? Your view of thinking about parents has changed over time. Well, there you go, an introduction to Billy Collins' Schoolville. I hope that, it, I hope that it's uh, going to make you want to read more of his great work.